I'm Cathy Burke. In the flesh. And I've been all over the country meeting women. Hello. 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 <laughs> all sorts of women. What's going on here? Skin edge. I'm the first woman in my family to ever buy property. Asking all sorts of personal questions. Have you heard of a Vijay show? Do you mind me asking why you decided to get your eggs frozen? I want to understand rites of passage I've never experienced. Why would you suddenly think I'm going to be a good mum? Because I've got nice, cuddly big tits. There you go, it's contraction. Oh, here, what like you oh. motherhood. I've never seen a little baby like warm out the oven. And the fairy tale wedding. That's what most little girls want to do. When you're on your own, you're more powerful and see the lengths we go to to please others. That's what I'd look like if I got rid of my double chin. Most blokes would f a ham sandwich. Everyone seems to have an opinion about what a woman should be. Well, this is my opinion. God, if only I knew all this so long ago. It's like, oh, my God. When I was growing up, it was, you're either going to have children or you have a career. It, you just can't have both. I mean, I look back and I just think, fuck, oh, you know. Two tea bags. And the reason for the two tea bags, it's not strength. It's to do with impatience. I've had a great career but I've ignored my biological calling and opted out of motherhood altogether. Yes, I do have sugar, even though I'm a fat twat. 400 years ago, I'd have been burnt as a witch for not wanting kids, or they'd have dunked me like a big old biscuit. It's very interesting whether I'll be judged the way other women have been judged for expressing not wanting to have children. Oh, Magda. Hello, Pets, how are you? I want money, 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 spend, spend, spend. I just had that thing in my head. I've got to earn money. I've got to work. You, uh, you like what you see? <laughs> it's big, isn't it? <laughs> you like? We were poor. I don't miss being poor. Hated it. Really hated it. I think that was probably one of the reasons why I never wanted kids when I was a kid, cos we didn't have much money. Hello, Perry. Did you have a nice time in Manchester? Yes, thank you, Miss Patterson. <laughs> so it was that thing of, well, if I have a kid, then all my money has got to go on this kid. Fuck that. If I have money, I, I want to spend money on myself. You know, I had a dog for a while, and that was fucking hard enough. Nowadays, women have amazing careers. We run big businesses and the country. But this may have come at a cost. The proportion of women who never have children has doubled in a generation, and the average age of a first-time mum has risen. What do you know about what do you think about scientific intervention when it comes to having babies? Yeah, I sort of think it's good. I think it's a great thing, actually. You don't need to have a husband to have a child. People used to, you know, pop out kids when they were 16 because they'd be dead by the time they were 35. But now it's like you can begin starting to have kids at 35, 40. The way society sees us women has changed. We're more educated with greater opportunities. But there is one thing that has not changed, our biological clock. That tick hasn't got any quieter. Fucking fuck on a really loud fucking bike. I mean, what a twat. I'm in the city of London to meet Joanna, an investment analyst. She's a Cambridge graduate and is paid a six figure salary. So I think it's fair to say the girl's done good. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Very nice Hi. to meet you. I'm Cathy. Joanna. Very nice to meet, nice to meet you. you. Thank you for doing Thank this. You. Sit down. Like more and more women in their mid 30s, Joanna faces the possibility that she won't have children. Yes. She's single, so to keep her options open, she's made the rare and expensive decision to freeze her eggs. The first thing I should ask is, what is it that you do? I am a global equity analyst. I work in the city for one of the fund management, asset management firm. So I don't really understand what that means, but it sounds very posh. 
So this is a really great job and yeah. high powered and yeah. and you work with a lot of men, I'm assuming. Yes. In the investment team, there are probably just five percent of women. Right. The rest is men. I can hear viewers at home thinking, but my God, she's so gorgeous. Of course she's gonna find a partner. So do you mind me asking why you decided to get your eggs frozen? So I just came out from a long relationship. I thought that I found the one and everything was going well until the relationship broke down. And then I ended up in my mid thirties thinking, oh wow, I have to do something now because it might be too late in a few years' time. I thought if there is this opportunity, I, I, will, I will take it. This is very unfair, isn't it? Because, you know, men, they can have their career and be fathers. Yes. You know, it doesn't... It just doesn't get in the way. Oh, I do think that having children affects men and women's careers differently, yeah. Um, you know, a man will suddenly get promoted if um, he's suddenly become a father because it's seen as, well, now he needs to have some more money because he's got a family to support. But you don't really hear about women getting promoted because they've had a kid. I want to live my life on my terms. I do not want to wait for a perfect man when he's going to show up, if he's going to show up. And I know that my biological clock does not wait, so I wanted to put a snooze button on it for the time being right. and enjoy my life, uh, enjoy my career. Are you trepidatious about this, you know? Because it, it, it seems to me quite a scary thing to put yourself through, you know? So it's not going to be an easy path. I, I do, do realise that. Yeah. To have that procedure with a needle in my ovary, it's, yeah. you know... Not, not too much fun, mm. but I'm thinking that i rather do that rather than find out in three, five years' time that I cannot have a child. That you've left it too late, yes. you mean? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I really want to know how it would feel when it's all done and dusted, because I think I would feel like a man, where you have no worries, no biological clock, and then I can yeah. take my time and date a guy for two years and don't think about getting married or getting engaged. I think it would be, like, it would lift so much pressure on yeah. my shoulder. Be very liberating, really. I think so. Yeah. Joanna's letting me follow her journey into motherhood over the next few months. I think what she's doing is pretty brilliant. She loves her job. She absolutely loves it. But she also loves the idea of having a family. I think a woman's role is to serve herself and make sure she is happy. And if that means having a high-powered job in the city or being a stay-at-home mom or doing both, then so, so be it. A woman's role, even those words, are just sort of what's wrong with everything, really you know, and why there hasn't been equality for, for so long. Have you ever had a maternal state? Yeah, I went through Moody Broody. Well, I met one person and I thought, if I'm going to have a child with anybody, I'm going to have it with this guy. Anyway, it didn't happen because the guy had a girlfriend and, you know, I tried not to sleep with people if they had girlfriends. But it was also really telling because I obviously didn't want it desperately because I would have made it happen. Because I think women are quite amazing. I think the women, if a woman really wants something, she will go for it and she will try and make it happen. I'm heading to Derby to visit a really good mate of mine. Hollywood superstar, Samantha Morton. Sam and I met on a TV set 20 years ago. Not long after, she became a single mum. She was basically a single mum to her eldest child for quite a few years. She didn't throw in the towel. She didn't give up at any point. So I just admire her balls, really. Are you all right? Yeah. <laughs> 
Hello. Hello. Welcome. What's going on here, skinhead? <laughs> Sam's just returned freshly shaven from filming The Walking Dead in LA. Can I take your coat? Yes. Sam and I have made very different life choices. She's a mother of three and married to a great man called Harry. Lovely. I'll do the rest, cos otherwise it'll be horrible. <laughs> She's already ruined it. Am I? What, with the... Am I not putting the milk in first? Oh, okay. I'm working class, babe. <laughs> Got to show my scumbagness. To me, Sam's a woman who has it all. A fabulous career and a loving family. So I want to ask her the question reserved for mothers, not fathers. How does she make it work? What are you cooking? Uh, leek and potato soup. So, I mean, like, did you always want to be a mum? Yeah, I did always want kids, but I was always scared of it. It was so overwhelming. I took the first year off. I remember being Oscar nominated and signing on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no money, cos Woody Allen doesn't pay. Yeah, and you're yeah. like, oh, I spent oh. all my Van der Gold money on my deposit for my flat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, do you know what I mean? It's fantastic. And you came round and did the ironing. I struggled. I found mm. it really overwhelming. I was very lonely, cos I was 20-something. And nobody... None of my... Pe all my peers were still going out raving yeah. or whatever, and I wasn't. Has it been easier with the next two, having, particularly having a partner that is there um... all the time, or... <laughs> or is it just like having another child with Harry? <laughs> no. I, do you know what is fascinating is Harry, a few years ago now, said, OK, this is silly, I'll be a stay-at-home dad. Right. So that's what Harry did, which is really misunderstood. Mm -hmm tricky yeah. for other people's opinions, but this is how we, this is how we rock. Mm. He has literally selflessly gone, my career, blah, 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 park it, how can I best support Sam? How amazing is that? Women have been doing that for hundreds of years, yeah. thousands of years, yeah. you know, giving up what they want to do for, to support the men. Yeah. It's that saying behind every great man there's a great woman. Mm. I feel at this stage I really couldn't do it without, without that him. backup. Yeah. Yeah. I think what's great now is uh, a lot of my mates that have got children, the one thing they've all got in common is that they've got a great male partner. I love stay-at-home dads. I just think, oh, that's just so brilliant. If I knew in my 20s that you could get married and meet someone and have kids and he would be happy to be the one bringing up the children, maybe I would have done it. But back when I was in my 20s, it was sort of unheard of. Male nurses were only just starting to happen in the 80s, and that was like a big dealio. I just think it's a bigger bigger subject being a mother to yeah. giving birth, because yeah. certain people that give birth, there's so many people in the, on the planet that don't have that little gene or whatever that the instinct kicks in. Now, for me, I've not shed a single tear over not being a mum, and that's sort of what is expected. Society thinks, oh, well, if you've not had children, you must be unhappy about it. I know because a man can say, I don't want children. I've never wanted children. Yeah, it, yeah. He doesn't then get bombarded with, well, you might change your mind, or do you know what? You're not a real man unless you're a dad. Yeah. Never. I used to get told all you're the time, woman, well, I used to get told you'd be a brilliant mum, and I'd go, why would you suddenly think I'm going to be a good mum? Because I've got nice, cuddly, big tits. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Because that seems to be a stereotype, that if a woman doesn't have children, she doesn't like children. Proper country soup in a proper country house. I really love kids, and I go off and see my little tiddler mates, and we have such a great time. But I'm so happy when I get home, I shut the door, skin up, and just... I'm on my own, making myself laugh more than anybody I've ever met in my life. So that's what, that's what goes on here. Without doubt, it is harder for women getting older. Well, for a start, we have to go through the menopause. I mean, men go through a sort of menopause, but it's called the midlife crisis. Like, oh, he's had an affair and he's bought a jag because he's got a midlife crisis. He's a fucking twat, you know, who was lucky to have somebody in the first place. <laughs> When we've gone through the menopause, there's no turning back. Our periods stop, so that means no more eggs to grow lovely little babies. 
Science is trying to fight this deadline. Hi, Hello, Dr. Wren. Very nice to meet you. I'm happy. I'm with Joanna visiting Dr. Mari Wren at the Lister Clinic. Dr. Wren has been helping women get pregnant for 30 years. I feel like Joanna's mother. <laughs> yes. <laughs> do you know, we do, we do sometimes get mums coming in. Yeah. Do your mum and dad know that you're thinking about freezing your eggs? They do know and they do not support. They do not understand why I cannot find a husband tomorrow and, and marry, you know. They, they said, we are going to organise the wedding in a week. Just find him. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the chances are of Joanna getting pregnant through, through doing this, through freezing her eggs? I'm going to be really honest mm. and tell you I don't know. Right. These ladies aren't going to find out until some stage in the future whether the eggs are going to recover from being frozen, whether they're going to fertilise, mm. how they're going to grow. The success of this process is very much down to luck. The stark truth is there's only a 35% chance of this working for Joanna, and the chances drop drastically with age. The ideal age to start having children is probably in your late teenage years or 20s. I mean, it's not the ideal time from a social perspective, but biologically, that is when a, a female would be most fertile. And there is a gradual decline over time, and it just gets worse. So yeah. it's tough, isn't it? I mean, women just have got the raw deal, <laughs> basically. You know, the way we're made women, it seems to be, it, it is tougher. It for is. us, it is you tough. know? It is tough. The menopause is probably the biggest bastard amongst the female anatomy. Your hormones just go ape shit. you know? It was that thing in her head. I used to walk around with a bag, like, that was... Like Mary Poppins fucking, you know, she pulls everything out. It was like I needed a bag that big, full of every fucking size of sanitary towel and every size of Tampax because there was, you just didn't, I didn't know what was going to happen from one day to the next. And actually what happened was that I became quite isolated because I just didn't want to fucking go anywhere. Because I hated being a woman during my menopause. I was like, why am I a woman? You know, I just couldn't bear it. Do you think there can ever be like, equality in the workplace because of the way we're made? I think the only way we'd make this fairer would be if men stopped having children at the same age as women. Because mm. if a man of 45 was going to really struggle to have children, it might focus the minds of the 30-year-olds that if they don't think about having kids in their 30s or early 40s, that they're possibly not going to become dads. And that's the difficulty. There is this huge biological difference yeah. that women run out of time, whereas a 70-year-old bloke, an 8-year-old bloke, if he's lucky enough or rich enough, probably, mm. to meet some young woman, can still have a child. So yeah. it's tough, isn't it? I mean, it's interesting because I thought, well, this is a solution for her and for other women, but it's a shame that it isn't 100% guaranteed. We're so lucky that Joanna has agreed to take part in this documentary because having babies and that, I mean, it is private. And people ask women so willy-nilly, when are you going to have your baby? Or why haven't you got any children? Or, oh, you've just had a baby, when are you going to have another one? I mean, it's nobody's fucking business, you know? I mean, if a some bloke, you know, had a boil lanced off his ass. You wouldn't say, oh, when are you going to get the other boil lanced? You know, it's, it's really personal. When I was growing up, the women I knew were knocking out babies in their early 20s. I was born in 1964 to Bridget Burke. She died from cancer 18 months after I was born and I grew up with my dad and two brothers in a council flat in Islington. Oh, this is a shame. We can't see through here anymore. But that is the plaque, the old plaque of the mansions when they were built and everything. As you can see, it looks a little bit like a tomb. 
When I was really little, I used to tell the other kids that that's where my mum was buried. I used to freak them out. That's where we lived. That was my bedroom. It was the best flats for hide and seek, tag and bulldog on the grass, and there was no sort of daytime telly. The only thing to entertain yourself was going out to play. I do remember if ever I went to anybody's house, the mums were always lovely. So I could go and get a bit of love off other people's leftovers. Then, then I, I had no shame in doing that, really. Claire's mum was uh, dippy egg toast. Bernice's mum was Chinese spare ribs. My God, you know, never had anything like that before. It was amazing. When my mum died, it was my god mum and my foster mum that sorted me out. It wasn't some official foster mother, I don't think. It was just she was a mate of my mum's and was like, well, I can look after her these days. And my godmother looked after me other days. But I think if that had happened now, we'd have all been put straight in a home. And it did feel like a family. I just had two homes. I had two homes and sometimes I'd have two dinners. It just, when I was a kid, it didn't feel like anybody had to pay for childcare. There was one mum in the flats that, you know, she'd have all the kids. It was just like, can you look after my kids for a couple of days? Cause I'm gonna do some work. It would be like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm here. Maybe it's that community thing that's gone out the window. In the 80s, things started to change. In Thatcher's Britain, it was about power, shoulder pads and money. And the idea of women having it all really took off. Women having choice and careers can only be a good thing in my book. But I do wonder if we've lost something in the process. Rather than empowering us, has the term having it all become just another pressure? I am smoking a fag. <laughs> I've never seen a birth, and it's really interesting, actually, because I was thinking about it, and I thought, oh, crumbs, a lot of the blokes I know that are dads, they've all been at a birth. The magic of childbirth, too, is a sequel. <laughs> Perhaps you could just encourage your wife with her breathing. Oh, right. Breathe! 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 <laughs> because I'm not one of these people that can sit and watch one born every minute. I'm quite squeamish. I've got um, terrible gag reflex, which has put me in bad stead with a couple of boyfriends over the years, but fuck them. Oh, what's her name going to be? Spud you like her. <laughs> it's not Spud you like her. It's Spud you like her. <laughs> it's exotic. <laughs> Most women still choose to become a mum. I'm at London's Whittington Hospital to meet Sharni, who's about to undergo this rite of passage. I want to find out what all the fuss is about. I think a birth just sounds like the most appalling thing ever. It's probably very beautiful once it's all happened, but I'm amazed that women are still doing it, to be quite honest. Okay. Sharni allowing us coming in while she's about to give birth to her first child. I mean, what a woman. Knockity knock knock. Hello, you're Sharni. <laughs> How are you, babe? Yeah. Yes? Right. Sharni is 37 weeks pregnant and in the early stages of labour. So what happened this morning then? Your water's just... Well, they just broke in the middle of the Uber. <gasps> I was horrified. Did they charge you extra? No, he didn't right. even give me a bad rating, which is... Oh, well, that's amazing. Yeah, I'm pretty that <laughs> still got 4.6 stars. Well, that's more than me. Yeah. <laughs> and you're sure you're cool with me being here? If you want me to go, just tell me to fuck off, and I'll, <laughs> I'll do, I'll do it, all right? Okay. No polite. I'll scream it. Well, that's fine. <laughs> I'm used to being screamed at. I work with actors. I'm used to tantrums. <laughs> <laughs> tell me a bit about, um, tell me a bit about your mum. I know very little about her, actually, other than 
you know, she was meant to be a really great woman. And then when I got older, I remember my godmother telling me, oh, your mum, you know, she could, she could swear like a navvy, you know what I mean? And so it was really good to know that actually she was quite tough. And that was great for me to know because it was sort of like, oh, well, that's where it comes from. I've got quite a tough attitude sometimes. So, so. it's contraction. Oh, here, you're in. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you look real good. Yes. Oh, Looking out the way. Breathing. Nice deep breaths. There was always a lot more money put into men's health than women's health for research and stuff. So, I mean, if men could give birth, it would be completely different. There'd be a ton of money to look after them, particularly with the aftercare. It's only in recent years that people are taking notice of postnatal depression. I mean, gee whiz, you'd be depressed if you'd had an eight pound beast coming out of your vagina. Your body gets completely fucked for at least a couple of months. You might have to put up with piles for the rest of your life. Yeah, I really do think this wouldn't be the case if men were having babies. Go for it. Go, 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 all the way down. Keep it coming, 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 keep it coming. All the way down into your bottom. You're doing it, you're doing it, you're doing it. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Still there. I know. Use it, use it, use it. All the way down. Shani's labour progresses slowly. The baby is three weeks early, and doctors decide she needs help to deliver. Sadly, unfortunately, poor Shani. Um, is so exhausted that she's not able to give birth naturally. She has to go into surgery. Um, this happens, this happens a lot. But I'm so excited because I've never seen a little baby like warm out the oven. That ain't happened before. Hello, 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 Terran. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I am now. You are now. now. Before I was a wreck. Ah, oh, babe. Hardly Good. slept throughout the whole night. Yes. She just, she just arrived. I can hear her. Yeah. Oh, babe. Ooh. Hello, Mum. How are you? Oh, is that your little baby? <laughs> With the help of the medical team and forceps, baby Yara was born just after 5 a.m. That was interesting. OK. <laughs> so pleased. Yes, you've been through it, mate. Been through it. Look at her little hand. Oh, little darling. Oh, mate. Thank you so much for letting us be this beautiful moment, man. Can I get a little kiss? Mm -hmm. Well done, babe. See you, baby Yara. See you soon, mate. <laughs> little thing. To sort of be there with somebody, I mean, it was an honour. And it's a little girl, which is lovely, because this is all about women, and look at this, we're welcoming a new woman into the world. What do you think the best and the worst things about being a mum are? I don't know. I suppose the best things about being a mum is just the joy and the, the fun of it, and the cuddles and all that business must be great. But I think the worst thing probably about being a mum is just how terrifying it is. I remember, you know, one of my godsons, when he was about 15, saying to me, when will my mum stop worrying about me? I said, it's never going to happen. I said, you could get to 45. Is she still here? She'll be worried. The worry is one thing, but the responsibility of having to provide financially for someone else has always put me off. 
I'm with Catherine Ryan. She's a single mum to her nine-year-old daughter. I want to know if becoming a mum changed her attitude to work. Do you think that having Violet has made you mighty? Mm. Yeah, having Violet is the best thing that ever happened to me in my life, for uh -huh. sure. Accountability and responsibility is a wonderful thing mm -hmm. and pushes you to achieve more than you would for yourself. Like every single job was a lifeline at that time. I knew that I needed to do my absolute best every single job. When I point at you, I want you to say, white moms, we wear gym clothes when we're not working out. We drink Catherine is now one of the UK's top comedians. When she had Violet, she was just starting out. We fuck without a condom because that shit's not contagious. White moms, be like, fuck the police. White moms, we really fuck the police. Earning your own money is so vital to mm. everything that women like us are working for. Mm. Because currency is freedom yes. and autonomy, and money and education can do things for you that no amount of preaching feminism can. It's so, it's so mm. symbolic of the oppression that women faced for generations and generations. And our grandmothers weren't allowed to buy property, open a bank account, or carry a passport without the signature of a man. Yeah. That is profound. Like when I first bought my flat in London, I was like, holy shit. Yeah. I'm the first woman in my family to ever buy property on her own. Are you? Yes. Oh my God. Yes. When I first got my place, I used to go around kissing the walls yeah. and hugging the walls. Yeah. And... You feel safe, truly safe yeah. and self-sufficient. If you've yeah. done all of it on your yeah. own, why, why would you then be like, excuse me, sir, why don't you come? Yeah. Get, I, I'd love to do your laundry. Yes, it's yes. Happening. Come and join us and fuck it all up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you think motherhood changes women's ability to work? Or do you think people think it does? I think it depends on the woman, you know? There's all this sort of um, boxing in, you know? If you, oh, if you've had kids, it's going to be very, very difficult to want to go back to work. Surely you're just going to want to be with your children. One woman might feel like that. Another woman might feel, oh, no, I've had my kids. I really want to go back to work. A woman like me, I don't want kids. I want my career. So we all have different unique ideas and thoughts and dreams and ambitions. Most women do aspire to become mothers, but not all of us. I wanted to meet someone who felt like me. Beautiful, thank you very much. 24 year old Megan has known from an early age she doesn't want to be a mother. She's in a committed relationship and is worried about getting pregnant. So she spent the past five years trying to be sterilised. I've never had that sort of drive within me, like, oh, I really want to look after a child of my own. Yes. But I've had some very bad reactions from right. people. I think it was last year. So I spoke to the doctor and I was like, look, I've been wanting to get sterilised for a while now. I've been asking since I was 19. And she said to me, oh, um, so why, why is it that you don't want to have them? And I said, oh, I've, I feel like I've always known. I've never wanted to be a mother. She said, oh, well, that's not a good reason. What? And I, I, was, I was just so confused. And I said, I find that really confusing. How is me saying that I don't want them not a good reason? The main reason why you face so mm. much sort of criticism and controversy with this, mm -hmm. this perfectly valid decision, mm. as far as I'm concerned, is that people think, oh, <clears throat> a woman's role is to be a mother. One of the reasons for that is because throughout history, um, it wasn't a choice. Mm -hmm. If you had an yeah. intimate relationship, that would be a consequence. However, since the pill coming in in the 60s, it became a choice. Mm -hmm. It's now an option. And I think because that's still a very new idea, oh, I'm choosing to have children or not to have them. That's the game changer. And I think we're still kind of getting used to the idea and society's sort of still trying to adjust to that. 
Yeah. So have you ever had any regrets or kind of second thoughts about your decision? Never, never, ever, ever about not having a child. I've had other regrets. The only regrets I've had in my life is not shagging the men that wanted to shag me. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And they are honestly the only regrets, you know? I'll take that advice. Yeah, I mean, you know, I was very prudish. I don't know what was going on in my head. <laughs> And a man that says he doesn't want children is seen as how responsible. But women are never talked about as how responsible. And I think it's really responsible if you don't want children not to have them. And if a woman decides I want to sterilise myself so I don't have to go through the agony of having an abortion, then let her do it. Let her decide what she wants to do with her own body. The day has finally come for Joanna's eggs to be harvested and frozen. It was also very thin, can't feel it. She's been self-injecting a mixture of hormones to increase her egg productivity. Hello, my dear friend. Hey, hello. My, my new adopted daughter. So how are you? How do you feel? I feel great. The procedure will cost Joanna nearly £15,000 and she's asked her ex-boyfriends to help her pay this bill. I have decided to send an email to all my ex-boyfriends telling them about this, telling them how much it costs and ask them for voluntary donations. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> One actually said that he would even donate his sperm. Oh, right. And yeah, you said... Should I want to free embryos? Yeah, like... <laughs> no, I don't want your sperm, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's habits. <laughs> And it is direct that you've asked them to pay. But I sort of think, well, right and all, because particularly, because one you were engaged to, yeah? Yeah. And, you know, an engagement is a promise of marriage and children and everything. And then he decided, oh, no, I don't want this yet. Mm -hmm. And left you a little bit in the lurch. Shouldn't have any issues with that. I'm so happy when you guys here. Be your pals, mate. Your fallopian family. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. She's got these rather attractive things. It's rather like working in a biscuit factory. It's not much difference, is there? Been between being oh, is it backwards? <laughs> is that it? Gorgeous. See? <laughs> right. Thank you. This is such a big process to go through. You know, and she's pinning a lot of hope on these eggs working. You'll see a little needle going into the follicle and just draining, draining the follicle fluid. So that's the needle. The point of the needle is that tiny speck. The doctor is collecting eggs using a suction needle. The eggs are then put into a test tube and taken to the embryologist to be counted and prepared for freezing. The more eggs collected, the greater the chance Joanna will have a baby in the future. Five eggs plus three tubes to look back. So, I mean, it is pretty invasive what the woman has to go through to get the eggs out. So much easier for blokes. All they have to do is have a nice little bit of masturbation. Let's face it, that's a hobby. I really hope it works for her, because the women that want to be mums, I think they deserve to be mums. Hello. <laughs> it's nice, nice to see you awake. I am awake. So, how many eggs? They said 14. 14, that's amazing. Yes. I was worried it would be only four or yeah, five. Yeah, yeah. But I'm so happy. I, I I started crying. They told me 14 eggs and I was like tears coming out. Of course. Much uh, Such much a better. relief. Oh, mate. 14 is amazing. Oh, I'm so delighted for you, babe. When I first met you, you said that you hope, like going through this process of having your egg frozen, eggs frozen, that, um, that in some way, then, 
you could feel like a man, like have the freedom of not worrying about your biological clock. I think with 14 eggs, I feel like it's the pressure is gone. Uh -huh. And I, I think it's going to be so much easier to go on a date and not worried about, you know, whether I would date this man for a year, three years, five years, it, it just wouldn't matter. Uh -huh. Oh, well Thank done. Thank you so much. Well you, done. You are like my mum. Oh, darling. Well, I feel like it. <laughs> the surgery has been a success. I'm glad Joanna feels like a weight has been lifted. The important bits are all kept here. Wow. But I can't help remembering Dr Wren telling me there's no guarantee this will result in a baby. The truth is, only time will tell if this has really worked. Although science now plays a part in motherhood, most women are still making babies the old-fashioned way. Yara's now four weeks old, and I'm visiting her and Mum Shani at home. She looks like such a little fatty since the last time. Little chubby cheeks. Oh, my darling little thing. Look at this little baby. Look at the hands. Look at her legs. Oh, my God. You must be so fascinated by her, really. Oh, God, yeah. Every day it's something new. Oh, I'd love it if you did a shit now. <laughs> oh, I, I'd, I'd feel so honoured and fantastic about life. So, how the hell are you? I'm <laughs> um, OK. Mm. I'm a little tired. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when I popped in to see you, just, uh, you know, I think Yara was about 45 minutes old. <laughs> yeah. And I've never seen a baby that new. And it was really like, oh, my goodness, now everything revolves around this little creature. She comes first. Yeah. Even, like, my relationship with my partner is, is so different now. It's almost like we're competing. Like, right. who's doing the most? Oh, that's gorgeous that he just wants to be yeah, involved. Yeah, it's though. lovely. She's just the centre of our world now. Are you even thinking about going back to work or...? It's funny, I've had that question so many times from friends, from midwives, from so many different people, and I'm really trying to just enjoy now. She's yeah. only going to be this small for... It's going to go so quick. You're not, like, thinking now, actually, I'd love to be a stay-at-home mum. Oh, not at all. That hasn't even crossed my mind, actually. That's interesting. I wouldn't expect my partner to bring home all the bacon and I'm just... Like, I love Yara and I love this time and I'm really mm. enjoying it, but I don't know. Work is what I've kind of grown to do. And, and as soon as we got the confirmation that she was a girl, for me, something switched on. I was like, right, I've got to set this example now. I've got to be the strong woman that I want her to be, you know. I feel very lucky because my heart's desire was freedom. And that's what I've had my whole life, you know. Yeah. And I look back and I've got, like, no regrets at all. Even though I love the babies, as you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've got no regrets about not having my own. Because they'd all be grown-up bastards now anyway, <laughs> probably taking all my money and driving me mad, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Selling stories to the newspapers about what a <laughs> shit mum I was. It can be seen as being quite selfish, you know? Um, but I'm very happy to be selfish, you know? It's my life and that's what I chose to do with it. But I've got the greatest admiration and respect for mums. The majority, not all mums, we know there's been some wrong ones, but the majority of mothers are quite magnificent. And if you are a mum, well done. Are you a feminist? <clears throat> Am I a feminist? I don't know. I've never called myself a feminist. I've never given myself any label, you know? People think I'm a cockney, but I'm Irish descent. I'm free. I'm free to do what I want, when I want. So, I don't know, I suppose that would make me a feminist. I just want women to be... not had a go at anymore. To just 
have their choices. You know, I want to do what I want to do without having to put some label on myself. Go along with me on this one. If you ain't got a baby to hug, just go to a park, hug a tree. Trees need hugging as well. People are really going to think I'm a tapped weirdo now. But I am, and I embrace it. Thanks, tree. You're going to have to sign a form <laughs> for being in the documentary. Mm -hmm.